Good morning, Brook Scholars. This is the way. Hey, we start our day. Hey, we got the knowledge. Oh, to go to college. Yeah, but don't stop there. No, go anywhere. Hey, this is the way. Hey, we start our day. Hey, hey, Brook Scholars, where's the party at? Right here in these books. Hey, book scholars, what time is it? It is time to motivate you. Good morning, book scholars, and welcome to Tuesday Word Study. As I mentioned yesterday, we will no longer be doing um, heart words because we've already done two rounds of our first grade heart words. By now, you should know how to read and write your heart words in a snap. So what we're going to do is we're going to um, practice a little more grammar-related things. So yesterday, we talked about simple subject and simple predicates. We know that we can identify or find a simple subject in a sentence by asking ourselves, who or what is this sentence about? Now, the simple predicate is what the the action or the verb that the simple subject or the noun is doing so today we have the sentence and i'm going to put it up here today we have the sentence the little girl danced around a beautiful garden again the sentence is the little girl danced around the beautiful garden I want you to stop and ask yourself, who or what is the sentence about? What's the simple subject? What is the action that the, or the verb that the simple subject is doing? That would be the simple predicate. Hopefully you've thought about it. So let's set up our slate. Again, just like yesterday, S dot S stands for a simple subject. S dot P stands for simple predicate. Again, in parentheses, I'm gonna say who or what the sentence is about. You don't have to write this down. I'm just gonna have it up here for, for you guys. Oh, and the simple predicate is the action or verb the simple subject is doing. So go ahead and read the sentence by yourself and identify, figure out what is a simple subject and what is a simple predicate in the sentence below. Go. All right, I have figured out the simple subject, which is who or what the sentence is about, and the simple predicate, which is the action that the simple subject is doing. So let's go over it together. And if you're not done, pause the video and go over it and press play when you're ready to go over it with me. All right, so the simple subject is girl. Who or what is the sentence about? It's about the girl. The simple predicate is that she danced. She danced. So hopefully you wrote girl and danced. Now, if you wrote little girl, little is actually describing the girl. So the girl by itself, that, that just girl is a noun, is a simple subject. And if you wrote danced around the beautiful garden, yeah, that's what she's doing, but the, the action alone that she's doing is danced. So remember, a simple subject and a simple predicate is usually one word that describes the noun and the action or the verb that the noun is doing. 
simple subject, simple predicate. So hopefully you got that down. I know yesterday was the first time we had um, gone over it in a little bit. So if you're having a little trouble, no big deal. Reach out to your teacher or we're going to be practicing this entire week. So I know if you made a mistake, you're only going to get stronger. You're only going to learn from your mistakes. All right, friends. Next up, we have a little more grammar. We are going to read a passage and this passage actually built on to the passage that we read yesterday. And today's focus is to find the nouns in the passage in the short story or the short chunk of um, story that I have up. So that I'm going to have up. So what is a noun? We kind of just went over it. If you said that a noun is a person, place, thing, animal, or an idea, I said I gave you a brain a kiss. Mwah. A noun is a person, place, thing, animal, or an idea. And again, it's who or what the sentence is about. Um, it's usually who or what the sentence is about, usually, not all the time, because there can be nouns within a sentence that um, is, anyways. So yes, today we're gonna focus on nouns. As I'm reading the passage the first time, I want you to ask yourself, let me get a little bit in the middle of the mud to put this up. I want you to ask yourself, do you notice any people, places, things, animals, or ideas in this passage? So here we go. Maps include information boxes called legends. He explained, this legend says that in upside down V's, that upside down V's, I'm sorry, represent hills. Next, Shanti's dad show her, showed her a line marked Grove Road. That is our street, cried Shanti. Exactly, her dad replied and pointed to the other street. And here is where grandpa lives. May I use the map to tell you how to get to grandpa's house? Sure, let's see if you can read a map. Hmm, I wonder if there are any people, places, places, things, um, animals, or ideas that we just read. So let's set up our slate. And remember, we're focusing, our focus is nouns. So I'm going to put noun. And today I'm going to do 12 lines just like I did yesterday. One, two three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And now we have all this space in case we need extra lines. So a really good strategy is to go sentence by sentence. Stop and ask yourself, who or what is the sentence about? Or if there are any people, places, things, animals, or ideas within the sentence. So I want you to read the passage, the short passage by yourself, and find as many nouns as you can. Go.
All right, friends, I have found a lot of nouns. If you are still working through the passage, that is okay. You can pause the video and um, do the rest, finish up the passage. And when you are done, you can press play and get started with me. So I found a bunch of nouns. Hopefully you found a good amount of nouns, a nice amount of nouns. So I'm gonna go sentence by sentence. I'm gonna read the passage and we're gonna figure out how we knew they were nouns. So the first sentence, maps include information boxes called legends. Well, if you said maps because a map is a thing, I said I'll give everybody an guess. Mwah. Include information boxes. If you wrote information boxes or um, boxes by itself, I guess that, that, that would count. Um, great job. Information boxes are a thing on a map called legends. Again, what you see on a map, you can see it. It's a thing on a map. So if you put legends, great job. He explained. This legend, again, a thing on a map, says that upside down V's represent hills. Hills are a thing. So if you put hills, I said I'll give your brain a kiss. Mm -hmm. Next, Shanti's, yeah, next, Shanti's dad showed her a line marked Grove Road. If you wrote Shanti's dad because he is a person, I said I'll give your brain a kiss. Mm -hmm. Showed her a line. The line on the map is a thing. Uh, marked Grove Road. Grove Road is a place. So it would be considered a noun, just like your street address. Next sentence. This is our street, cried Shanti. Street. A street can be a place or a thing. Shanti, a person. It's her name. It's a proper noun. Exactly, her dad replied and pointed to another street. Her dad, actually not her, just dad by itself. A dad itself is a noun because it's a person. I forgot to put street. Again, there's street twice. Street is definitely a noun. And here's where grandpa lives. He put grandpa down. Great job, he's a person. May I use the map, next sentence, may I use the map to tell you how to get to grandpa's house? May I use the map? A map is a thing. It's a noun to get to grandpa's house. If you put grandpa in house by itself, no big, uh, that's, that's fine. But grandpa's house is a noun. It's a place. Let's see if you can read the map. If you put map, because a map is a thing. I said I gave your brain a kiss. Mwah. These were a bunch of nouns. Hopefully you have found a good chunk. If you're not finding the exact same amount, no big deal. But you should be at least finding, I don't know, a good amount. Like at least eight or more nouns because there were tons of nouns in this short passage. So awesome job, friends. Next up, we have dictation. I'm going to say the sentence twice. You're going to say it with me the third time. I need you to have listening ears because when I say it the third time, you're going to write it. And I want you to be thinking about those proper writing habits. I'm not going to go over it because these are things that you should be paying attention to when you're writing. Now, we'll go over it after. But for right now, let's get right to the sentence. So the sentence for today is, the bike has brown, red, and purple all over it. The bike has brown, red, and purple all over it. All together, the bike has brown, red, and purple all over it. Mm, this is a long one. Ten. 
go. I'm done with my sentence, so I'm going to go over my writing habits. I'm going to double, triple check my work. Alrighty, friends, I'm ready. If you're not done in writing your sentence, it is okay. I want you to pause the video and finish it. When you press play, we can go over it together. All right. If you wrote, the bike has brown, red, and purple all over it, great job. You wrote all 10 words. That means you were listening carefully. Now let's go over our writing habits. What should every sentence start with? A Capital. If you have a capital T, I said I'll give your brain a kiss. Mwah. What should every sentence end with? A punctuation mark. If you put a period or an exclamation point, great job. I thought I said it in an exciting voice. I don't know if maybe you didn't, but great job. If you put a question mark, that is not correct. I was not asking a question. I wasn't asking who, what, when, where, why or did, I simply am saying the bike has brown, red, and purple all over it. So make sure you're thinking about what punctuation mark goes with the sentence. Is it a statement sentence, an exciting sentence, or a question sentence? Now, let's go over every word. The is a heart word, T-H-E, the, bike, b. I bike. I know that magic E is making I say its name. Has heart word H A S. And all of these colors are also heart words. So hopefully you wrote them right. Brown. B R O W N. Brown. This was one that you can actually tap out too or stretch out, sound out. Or ow. Mm. Brown. Red. R E D. Red. Another one that you could stretch out or sound out. R -e -e -d. Red. And is a heart word. A N D. And. Purple. Heart word. P U R R control vowel. P L E. Purple. You can also sound it out. Purp. Purple. Purple. All, another heart word, A L L all. Over is definitely a heart word we've gone over. O V E R, over. It, another heart word. I believe this is a kindergarten heart word, so hopefully you got that right. Um, there are no proper nouns, so if you capitalize the B, the R, the P, Colors are not considered proper pronouns. I know um, it's a name of a color, but they're not a specific, like it's not like a, a Patrick purple. It's not the name of the purple itself. It's just the color and colors are not capitalized. So hopefully you did an amazing job on, to, on today's dictation. If you had any trouble, again, feel free to reach out to your homeroom teacher. Um, and have a wonderful Tuesday. I miss you guys and I'll see you soon. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.